river was going up very quickly. Um, huge trees, uh, lots of debris. Deadly floods. Yeah, there's a situation going on. So he, he said, yeah, we need to start getting you guys across the river uh, right away. People still missing, bridges washed out as more storms push through burn scars in Poudre Canyon. We anticipate that that will last through the weekend. And mask or no mask, the state issues a guide for parents as kids get ready to head back to school. And a larger than life statue is coming to the state capitol. He was a very uh, respected, well-known and highly decorated General. We're talking to the artist bringing the World War veteran to life. To be selected to be the sculptor of General Rose is, is, a, is a great honor. Thank you for joining us tonight at 5. I'm Shannon Ogden. I'm Ann Trujillo. Let's get a closer look at everything you need to know about these floods. From this map here, you can see where exactly these storms are impacting the most. The Cameron Peak burn scar area and the East Troublesome burn scar area. As of right now, the area with the biggest concern is the East Troublesome. In both Grand and Southwestern Larimer County, a flash flood warning is currently in place and it doesn't expire until 6:15. Air Tracker 7 flew over the East Troublesome floods just a few hours ago. Look at that. Now, we know so far one woman was killed and there are still two people missing tonight. We have team coverage this evening. Stacy Donaldson tracking the current storms and whether the flood warnings are going to be extended. First, let's get to Liz Gilardi, who is live in Poudre Canyon. And Liz, the Sheriff's Department is still looking for anyone who may be trapped. Well, they are, and those efforts are underway. And we saw search and rescue teams stationed along the river on our drive in. That water is dark. It's moving fast, and we saw debris floating downstream. One woman is dead, and two men are missing. Those search and rescue and recovery efforts are underway as of right now. And the Sheriff's Department also tells us that five homes have been destroyed. We also heard over and over again today just how fast this area flooded. The Sheriff's Department started receiving phone calls about the river rising around 6 p.m. yesterday, and then they those calls tw quickly turned into phone calls about a mudslide. Then mandatory evacuations were put in place. Deputies went to every single campground in the area, and they told people to get out to seek higher ground. And again, all of this happened incredibly fast. This morning, search and rescue efforts and recovery efforts got underway. Way. First thing, damage assessment teams also went in to survey the road, bridges, and any homes that might have been damaged or destroyed. And this afternoon, the sheriff announced the river will likely be closed uh, through the weekend due to safety concerns. The closure is, is for several reasons. Um, obviously, first and foremost, we want to make sure that everyone in the area is as safe as possible. We want to make sure it's as safe as possible for searchers. Uh, rescuers and workers who are going to be cleaning up the debris. But also, if we do get more rain and, and more debris enters the river, we don't know exactly what that's going to cause downriver. If we, uh, if we start to do the cleanup and remove debris from the river, we don't know what's going to happen when that happens either. So we want everyone off the water just to be safe. And that is the concern. What happens if there's more rain? And in talking with people in the area, they said this wasn't some huge downpour yesterday. It just kind of started off as a light rainfall, and that's really why it took so many people by surprise. But again, the sheriff wants everyone to stay off the river. Talking with some homeowners today, they said they saw rafters on the river. That's incredibly dangerous, especially with that debris. I mean, we saw large chunks of wood floating downstream. Not a good idea, so the river will will be closed likely through the weekend and uh, another update now from CDOT Highway 14 uh, just reopened a short time ago. Reporting live was Gilardi, mm. Denver 7. That's incredible images. Mm -hmm. Liz, thank you for that. Let's get to meteorologist Stacey Donaldson now. Stacey, these storms aren't just impacting those burn scars. That's right. A section of I-70 in Glenwood Canyon that is still closed. We're also hearing there are some delays out of DIA due to thunderstorms. <laughs> We have a lot going on across the state, and while it's been hot and hazy here for the Front Range, we have flash flood watches and warnings in effect off to our west from northern Colorado to southern Colorado. So we have a lot going on here with showers and thunderstorms making their way uh, through the areas that flooded yesterday. Flash flood warning just south of Poudre Canyon now, just north of Granby, and a flash flood watch for the entire area until 8 o'clock tonight. Also from Buena Vista down uh, towards Salida and Silver, Silver Cliff, we also have flash flood 
warnings in those areas as well as these thunderstorms to continue to roll on through the area and down toward Telluride, Creed and Durango, even into Pagosa Springs. We have flash flood watches in that area as well. So we're going to continue to see these thunderstorms roll through. Now they're making their way across the front range. We'll talk about whether or not we have chances for flooding here for our area coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Stacy. We'll keep monitoring the situation in Larimer County and bring you live updates throughout the night at 6 and 10 and at 8 o'clock on Denver 7 News on Local 3. And there are also updates for you on the DenverChannel.com. You can get in-depth weather coverage for your area for free on the Denver 7 Plus app. Just download it for your streaming device. Well, if you haven't received your COVID-19 vaccine yet, here's another incentive. One shot will now get you a free $100 Walmart gift card. This is only eligible for those who have not received the first or second shot, and you must go to a designated site, and you have to act fast. Designated sites are only open tomorrow through Sunday, and you can find out all the details on the DenverChannel.com. And today the governor announced the new shot at a scholarship incentive to encourage college students to get vaccinated. 67 students at Colorado Community Colleges will be picked to receive scholarships worth $75,000. Now the only requirements, you must get vaccinated now through September 15th and apply online on the Colorado Community College System.com. It is still one of the biggest questions for parents right now. Will masks be required when kids head back to school next month? Well, the state has issued a new guide that schools can follow that aligns with CDC guidelines. According to Colorado health officials, schools where communities have low vaccination rates and high case counts should wear masks, increase social distancing, implement consistent testing, contact trace and limit high risk activities. Now, the thing is, this is just a guide for parents and not a set guidance from the state. So far, no school districts have said they'll require masks at the start of the school year. There will soon be a new statue outside the state capitol. Just yesterday, Governor Polis held a dedication ceremony to commission an artist to create a memorial to one of Colorado's greatest war veterans. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez sat down with the sculptor who's bringing that memory to life. Pull a piece of clay out. A walk through George Lundin's studio in Loveland is like taking a trip down memory lane. A lot of really neat people. From molds of historic figures to capturing powerful moments in time, Lundin has been bringing clay and bronze to life for decades. Sculptors and uh, people have been doing this for 5,000 years, and it hasn't changed much. His latest project revolves around a two-star general raised in Denver who had a big impact, but nowadays carries little notoriety. This is one of the greatest American war heroes that I've ever heard of. General Maurice Rose is the highest ranking and most distinguished Jewish American soldier in U.S. history. He served in World War I, then years later, World War II under President Eisenhower. What Grant was to Lincoln, Rose was to Ike. Paul Shaman was one of those who, after reading General Rose's history, persuaded the state legislature to allow for the creation of a statue in his honor at Lincoln Veterans Memorial Park. In these days of people being kind of anti-monument and anti-statue uh, with what's going on politically, that our legislature would vote unanimously to put this statue on the grounds of the Capitol was very fulfilling. Someone who earned their reputation in service to our country. Before Governor Polis's official announcement, Lundin was already busy at work. Anytime you do a portrait of somebody or you do a, an illustration of somebody in bronze, for instance, with the general, we have to have all the right equipment. So he bought World War II goggles from Germany, boots similar to what he would have worn, and binoculars. You're trying to do justice to the person. You're trying to do justice to the service that he was in. Before the general statue was erected, it'll go through multiple molds until being shaped by fire. Then you end up, when it's cold, you knock that mold off and you get a piece of bronze that looks just like the piece of wax that looked just like the piece of clay. In the end, the most important piece is preserving Colorado's history. Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. And the general statue is being funded by community donations. And to find out how you can give, visit our website, thedenverchannel.com. Hit $20, and I'm like, okay, maybe it's time to buy. To the moon. 35 grand investment. Uh, at one point, I think it was up $100,000. It's more than just brokers getting into buying and selling stock. That I didn't need some super knowledge for this. People are betting big on less popular stocks. The whole reason I'm doing this is I want to retire early. I don't want to keep working. But is it worth it? We're taking a 360 look at retail trading and the risks you need to know before diving in.